everybody. Glad you're here. I miss you all. I can't wait to see you all again, but we're having a good time. I hope you're ready to have a good time. Welcome to Kids Blast. All right, are you guys ready to do our memory verse game? And Pastor Nick and Gingy are here to help us today. So grab your balloon. If you have a balloon, if you don't have a balloon, that's fine. Grab a small ball or something like that and you can play along with us. We are going to read over our memory verse a couple of times and then you guys are gonna help me and we are going to keep the balloon in the air the whole time. Don't let it touch the ground, okay? You think you can do it? Here we go, ready guys? John 14, six, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. All right, did you do it? Okay, here we go. This time, Mrs. Gill's gonna try to jump in there with us, but I have a string on mine, so we'll see if I can do a better job. Here we go, ready? John 14, six. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Did you do it? Did you make it? Oh, Gingy almost dropped his. Let me help him. <laughs> All right, let's do it one more time. Are you ready? Get your balloon. Here we go. Ready? John 14, 6. You gotta say the verse with me. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. <laughs> Great job, guys! Nutsy, where did you get that from? Oh, Pastor Nick gave it to me before he left. He said that he thought that I would have fun with it. <laughs> Are you having fun? I am! I love balloons, they're so fun! Are you guys playing with your balloons at home too? Oh, that's super fun. All right, but now it's time for our story, so you can't play with your balloons now, okay? All right, here we go. All right, so I want to also tell you guys that did you know we have this much fun every Sunday here at Crossway at our church, Crossway Kids, in our right here in our kids' room. We have so much fun. We see Nutsy, we see Larry. I get to see the kids too. I know, and it's so fun, isn't it? They love to see you guys. So if you don't already have a church that you go to, we would sure love you to come and visit us. So as soon as all this virus is over and we're able to come back to church on Sundays, we start right at 10 a.m. And we would love to have you. I would love to have you. Nutsy and Larry would love to see you right here in our class. I hope that you'll come. All right, Nutsy, are you ready to do our singing? I am. All right, Nutsy is going to sit right here and he's going to watch you and you are going to pay really good attention, all right? Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Everybody stand up. Reach your hands up as high as you can to the sky, okay? Ready? Reach your hands up to the sky. Wiggle your fingers and wave goodbye. Now it's time to touch your toes. Turn all around and put your finger on your nose. Jump up once, jump up twice. Now sit down, got your hands folded, and fold your hands so nice. Now we're ready to listen and obey. Let's find out what we'll learn today. Open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, lay them in your lap. Ready? We're going to go really loud or really quiet, okay? Here we go. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Great job. You did fantastic and you're all ready for us to listen to our story. Our story today is continued from last week where we were learning about when Jesus died on the cross for us. He didn't stay dead, did he though? No, he didn't. He arose from the grave. He came back from the dead for us. That is the best part of the whole story is that he arose for us. Well, there was some time after Jesus 
he arose from the dead, that he was still on earth. And that is one of our stories for today. We are going to talk about a man whose name was Thomas. And he was one of Jesus' disciples. Well, after Jesus had rose from the dead, he saw one of the ladies in the garden and he told her, go tell everybody, I am not dead. I am alive and go tell them that they are going to see me. So they were all, she came back and they told everybody, you won't believe it, Jesus he really isn't dead. He really is going to come back. And he really came and he talked to me and he told me that he's going to come and see us. And so we need to be ready for him. So here they were. They were all in this one room together, talking and enjoying visiting and fellowshipping with each other. And all at once, Jesus appeared right there in the room with them. He didn't, wait a minute, there wasn't any doors open. And they're did he come in the window? Did you see it? How, where did he, how did he get here? Everybody was looking around. <gasps> Jesus was, was in his resurrected body, so he didn't have a flesh body like us where he didn't have to use the door. He didn't have to use the window. He just went right through the wall. Whoa, that's pretty amazing. I know I can't do that. Can you do that? No, I can't. I know you can't either. So Jesus came into his disciples and he was talking to them. And they were so excited to see him. And guess what they saw? They saw the nail prints in his hands and in his feet. And they saw his side. And just like that, that he came, he left. And he didn't use the door. And he didn't go out the window either. He just disappeared. Huh? Well, Thomas was not there. Hmm. When Thomas got back, they said, Thomas, you won't believe what happened. They started telling him, Jesus was here. He just appeared to us. He came right into the room with us and he was talking to us. And, and Thomas said, mm -mm. I just, I'm sorry. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. I can't believe that that was Jesus. It couldn't possibly be him. And they said, no, but it really was. He was really here. And he talked to us. And he said, nope, just not going to believe it. I ain't going to believe it until I see the nail prints in his hands. But we saw it, Thomas. We saw it. You you did, Nancy, did you see it? Oh, Thomas, he really was here. Well, I'm not going to believe it until I touch his hands and I touch his side. I will not believe that it was him. So guess what happened? A little while later, Jesus appeared again. And this time he appeared right to Thomas. And he walked up to Thomas and he said, Thomas, your faith is so small. You need to have big faith. You knew, I told you before I died that I was gonna come back from the dead. You knew that. Why would you have such small faith? You need to have big faith. And he said, look here, touch my hands, touch my feet, touch my side. Know that it is me. Now, it's kind of hard for us. We have to have that same kind of faith that Thomas did not have. We have to have faith that Jesus wants us to have. And it's hard for us to have faith sometimes because faith is believing in something that we can't see. We don't know what's here. We have to believe in it though. How do we have that kind of faith? Well, I am going to show you an experiment because can you breathe really big for me? Everybody breathe in. Now let it out. Now, unless I had a feather or something, you wouldn't even be able to, to see that I was breathing. Can you feel it though? Can you blow on your hand? Do you feel it? Yeah, you can feel it. Well, even though I can't see that I'm breathing, do I believe that I am? Yes, because my lungs are filling and I know that I'm alive because I'm breathing. Even though I can't see, I can't see inside my body and you can't see inside of yours, but you're alive and you know that. Well, this is how we can see our air. <laughs> so now can you see your air? 
Yeah, you can. So faith is hard sometimes. It's hard for us to trust the things that we can't see. Can you see God? I can't see him either. Do we know that he's there? We do because he loves us and he answers our prayers. He's all the way in heaven. But just like I can't believe, I can't see that air. Did you see it go anywhere? Nope, I didn't see it either. But God is there. He is just like the air that we breathe. You might not be able to see it. You might not be able to touch it. But you know that he's there. And that's exactly how God and Jesus are. We can't touch them. We can't see them with our physical eyes, but we know that they're there. And we need to have faith, not the kind of doubting faith, not that doubting faith that Thomas had. We need to have faith in Jesus and believe that he's there and that we know that he is there. I want you to think about that this week. Do you have faith like Thomas or do you have the faith that God wants us to have? Are you guys ready to sing? Everybody stand up. Here we go. We are going to sing it. I love him better every day. We're talking about Jesus and we do love him better every single day. Here we go. Ready? I love him better every day. I love him better every day. Close by his side, I will abide. I love him better every day. All right, now this time we're going to spell it. Are you ready? Here we go. I love him better every D-A-Y. I love him better every D-A-Y. Close by his S-I-D-E, I will A-B-I-D-E. I love him better every D. A Y. Good job. Now this time when we do it, we're going to do D-A-Y. Can you do that? All right. Get your hands ready. Here we go. I love him better every D-A-Y. I love him better every D-A-Y. Close by his S-I-D-E. I will A-B-I-D-E. I love him better every D-A-Y. All right, good job, that was fun. All right, here we go. We're gonna do the devil is a sly old fox because that is what he is. Ready? Get your fingers ready, here we go. The devil is a sly old fox. If I could catch him, I'd put him in a box. I'd lock the door and throw away the key for all those tricks he's played on me. I'm glad I got salvation. I'm glad I got salvation. I'm glad I got salvation. I'm trusting in the Lord. All right, I couldn't hear you very good. You gotta sing really good for me, all right? We're gonna do Jesus Loves the Little Children. He does, he loves you a lot. Here we go, ready? Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Thanks for singing with me. Come on, let's have some more fun. Hey, Larry. Well, hi there, Mrs. Gill. How's everybody doing? Well, I hope they're doing fine. I know I'm doing fine. How about you? Well, we're getting along okay. I got such a tummy ache from eating all those jelly beans last week, but then I saw that you brought a snack cake, and I thought, mm, 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 I want to try that too. Oh, oh, wait, 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 you can't have it yet. Oh, I can't? I thought you brought it for me. Well, hang on, we're going to talk about it first. Are you ready to talk about it first? Well, I guess so. It just... It smells so yum. Oh, now, Larry, come on. Now, you just be patient. Be patient, okay? All right. We're going to talk about a scripture in the Bible in the New Testament. I'm going to read it to you. 1 Peter 3, 15 says, But sanctify the Lord your God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is within you, the meekness with meekness and fear. And what I want to talk to you about is we've talked about faith a little bit today. Now, there's a kind of faith that can be a little bit scary that I want to help you see uh, something about that, okay? All right, so faith, we're supposed to trust who? 
Um, aren't we supposed to trust God? Yes, that's right. That's who our faith is supposed to be in. Is our faith supposed to be in what other men tell us? Um, but wait a minute. Aren't you the teacher? Aren't I supposed to trust you? Well, yes, you are. But did you know there are some teachers that don't teach us the truth sometimes? And that can be kind of scary. So do you know what's important for us to do? It's important for us to get in the book ourselves. Yes, it is. It's very important because that way, if somebody is teaching you the wrong thing, then you will know what God says about it instead of what somebody else says. See, it's kind of like this little snack cake right here. It looks yummy, doesn't it? it? It looks so yummy on the outside. You know what? I think, hmm, do you smell that? Oh, it smells yummy. Oh, it does. Can I? Uh, now, hang on just a second. Larry, you can't eat it yet. Because inside of here is something special. There is something inside of it. Well, I can't see it. Well, I know, but you just got to trust me that what's inside of it is what I say. And you know what? I think inside of it, it might have some cream. <gasps> some cream. Oh, I love cream. It's so yummy. I know I love cream too, but what's inside of here? Now, what if I were to tell you that there was chocolate inside? Oh, but I love chocolate and I just wanna, all right, hang on Larry, you can't eat it yet. I'm gonna let you have a bite in a minute. So let's actually find out what's inside here. So I'm gonna break it open. Oh, looky there. Was there chocolate inside of here? There wasn't. What if I had told you the wrong thing? There isn't chocolate cream inside of here. Instead, there's vanilla cream inside of here. There was cream. Do you see how that sometimes people can take the Bible, they can take God's words and they can twist them and make them sound like the way they want them to sound and they might teach you the wrong thing. That's not what God wants for us, is it? No, he wants us to have the truth about what's actually there. So that's why, especially when you're older, you need to, if you know how to read, you should be reading your Bible. So that way, if the preacher teaches something or the teacher teaches something, you're able to get your Bible and check it for yourself to see if they told you the truth about it. So I want you to have a snack cake and I want you to stop and think about the truth, okay? Is the whole truth in God's word here? Is it what we are learning and is that the truth? Or are you just trusting what someone tells you? And what if you trust and it's not the right truth? It's important that we know that truth, okay? All right, here you go, Larry. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Gill. You guys have a good week, bye-bye. Bye-bye.